Hello, everybody, and welcome to Star School. <laughs> Super excited to be here today. Uh, we love doing these, uh, these, these Thursday Star School classes and really working on leadership development. So we're continuing our course here on leadership development. We're, we're going through the book, The 21 Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. And I actually love this book so much. It made such an impact on my life 20 years ago that I decided to become a certified John Maxwell trainer. And um, I, I've dove into this book um, numerous times. It's been taught by John himself on this book. And um, I'm telling you, these 21 laws will change your life. They'll change your longevity business if you really absorb them and practice them um, on, a, on a daily basis. So today's law is no different than any others. It is essential. I mean, this is the reason why we're here at Longevity is to build an inner circle. So we're, we're going over today the 21 laws of leadership. Law number 11, the law of the inner circle. And John states that a leader's potential is determined by those closest to him. And I can't agree with this more. And I have Black Diamond Ambassador Cheryl Morley with me here today. Hi, Cheryl. Hi there. How are you? I'm so excited to be here. I think this is such an awesome topic. And Paul, I love this law. I yeah, love it. And, you, and you live this law. I mean, Cheryl's gone out and she's you know, she did all the means with Doc for five years on the road, signed up thousands of people, but found an inner circle and, and, and now can point to four or five people that make her all of her money. Um, so that's how it works. Everybody is just like Cheryl. If you talk to any millionaire in this industry, they all tell you the same thing. They worked their butt off for, for four or five years and found a dozen people that they poured themselves into and then from those dozen people, four or five, they always can count it on one hand that made them all their money. So that's how this industry works. And that's how your mindset has to be. So Cheryl, tell us about this, this inner circle law. Well, I love it, Paul. And I love that you said it's four or five people because you know it doesn't seem like it's overwhelming. But let's talk about this. You know, we refer to this law as the lead like Jesus law. So you guys all know this. Jesus found 12 people. He poured himself into them, and they pretty much did the same. So they taught the word of the Lord to small groups of people all throughout the world, and his word continued to spread through small groups everywhere. And now we have over 2 billion Christians on the earth because of those 12 people. You guys, we cannot overemphasize the importance of this law of the inner circle. So, Paul, tell us a little more about that. Yeah, it, it needs to be our entire focus. I mean, um, we need to be focused on finding and developing an inner circle. And um, you, you got to have the 12 leaders like Jesus did, you know, and then he, then those 12 leaders went out and, you know, we have different churches around and, and groups of people that, share the message. And, and so it's really about small groups, you know, and, 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 you know, Jesus picked 12. I think it's an awesome number. And it just so happens to be the same number of people you have to have to become a car qualified one star here at Longevity. So it's a great number. And, and that's the number that we go with and, and encourage you to, to focus on. So enrolling new customers is important. I mean, that's a given. You got to enroll new customers. But however, you must put the majority of your focus on finding and developing an inner circle. That's what John talks about here in this chapter. It is what ultimately will give you the ability to live the life you want. And that's what Star School is all about. We, Cheryl and I want to help you live the life you want. So first, you got to figure out what that life looks like and then learn these laws and apply them so that you can live that life. And Cheryl and I really love this book um, called uh, The One Thing. Um, it's by Gary Keller, and he states in, he has this great question in this book, The One Thing. Um, he says, what's the one thing that I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? So, you know, I see a lot of people turning longevity into a sales game. I'm just selling, 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 selling. Well, if you turn into a sales game, you're missing the whole point of network marketing. This is about going out and, and developing an inner circle around you so that things become easier for you. Um, and, and when you have these people around you, these great, unbelievable leaders, and, and you, you found them and you develop them, 
your life becomes so easy. And, and because, you know, they're the ones making you look good. So develop leaders. That's what the one thing is, you know, with the end being to develop an inner circle of, of 12 people. And there's this um, other guy named Brendan Bouchard. He wrote, he wrote this book called Peak Performance Habits, which is one of the top five books I've ever read in my whole life. So read that book if you haven't uh, so far or read that already. But, the, you know, he talks about these six laws or these six habits um, that peak performers have. And habit number one is to seek clarity. And he talks in this first chapter about the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing here at Longevity, despite whatever you think the main thing is, it's to develop an inner circle of 12 people. That's your end game. That's what you're here to do. I love that, Paul, because it's so important. Those 12 people um, really become not only your business leaders and your and, and you know, uh, folks that you talk to um, so often, but they also become your really good friends. And I love that. And um, I, I just want to talk about um, a few of my favorite paragraphs um, from this chapter. So when you see an incredibly gifted person, it's always tempting to believe that talent alone made them successful. Now to think that is to buy into a lie. Nobody, and I mean nobody, does anything great alone. Leaders do not succeed alone. A leader's potential is determined by those closest to him. What makes the difference is the leader's inner circle. Right, so you think about that. What makes the difference is the leader's inner circle. Only if you reach, if you reach your potential as a leader, do your people have a chance to reach their potential. Gosh, that's such a big, um, you know, it's kind of weighty. When I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, it's such a responsibility, right? It's such a responsibility that we have to reach our potential for people on our team to reach their potential. So there's only two types of people in the world, those who lift and those who lean. You guys, be someone who lifts up others, you know, not someone who leans on others. Let's lift others up. Never stop improving your inner circle. Look for great people to add to your inner circle and work to grow those people in your inner circle. That's like one of our main jobs is to grow the people inside of our inner circle. You all know we need 12 personally enrolled distributors to qualify as a one star and also for the monthly car bonus, right? That's super important. So you have two choices. You can build slow or you can build fast. But we know for sure that success loves speed. So you've got to decide today that you will find your 12 inner circle leaders and work tirelessly with them to closely develop them into great leaders. And the best way to do that is to have them become a part of our star school and leadership development classes, just like this one, the ones that we do every single week. So Paul, tell us what we can do this week to really make a difference. Yeah, well, Cheryl, those were such powerful paragraphs that you picked out from this chapter. I mean, just incredible. So if you haven't had a chance to, to read this chapter yet, um, just chapter number 11 in the book, please read it because there's so many more um, paragraphs. I know you just picked out your few of the favorite ones that you had, but that's your number one homework assignment is to, is to read this chapter and what powerful statements John makes um, in this chapter. So your homework um, is to list the people in your inner circle. So you want to pick up the 12 people. If you don't have 12, it's fine. You can get four, two, or however many you have. Um, and score them each on a, on a scale from one to 10. You know, so we got we to gotta really score our inner circle. And, and when Cheryl and I did this, you know, I mean, you were all going to do this. And, and you're going to be like, oh, my inner circle isn't as good as I thought it was. You know, you got to look at those 12 people and and score them on a scale from one to 10. And then you can see how strong is your inner circle. You know, and, and a lot of you might be saying, man, I gotta really work on this one. 
you know, and that's, that's fine. But at least we know where we stand now and where the focus is going to go. So like Cheryl said, um, constantly be working with your 12 and, and looking for new people. You know, you're always on the lookout. I got to build this inner circle. Who would I want in my inner circle? And you're going to start attracting people and seeing people in line to the supermarket or there or there or there or there. And you're just going to be like, you know, sitting next to someone on an airplane maybe or something where you're like, man, if I had that person in my inner circle, you know, the whole score of my inner circle would jump up uh, 100 points, you know. So you want to be always looking for that leader and not, not just bringing them in, but plugging them in, like Cheryl said, into these star school classes because we, Cheryl and I, our whole focus is on lifting the lid of other people. So score yourself on this inner circle law. Basically, um, the score you give yourself is the average score of all your inner circle people. So if you got, let's just say, you know, I got five people in my inner circle and they all score five. Well, then you're aver obviously your average is five. So that would be your, your score for this law. I hope that makes sense. So take your, all your people that you have in your inner circle, add up all their scores, divide by how many people there are, and then you got an average. So that is your inner circle score. And your goal is to make that a 10. Okay, it's so where you got 12 people and they're all a 10. That, that, that's the end goal here. Um, so questions to, to, to think about, they're in, they're in the back of the book. So if you got the book, The 21 Laws of Leadership in the back, there's some great questions that get your, get your mind working back there. Um, number one, are you strategic and highly selective about which people you're closest to uh, personally and professionally? You know, we're, we, you know I, I love being in, in these large crowds. I've been to Tony Robbins seminars and all these different seminars where he makes us write on a piece of paper our five closest friends and their income. And by gosh, you know what? My income was the average of those five people. And everybody in the room, 2,000 people, said the same thing. You know, it's, it's who you associate with yourself with that who you become. You know, so you really got to watch who am I hanging out with? Who, I, who do I have on my team? And, you know, a lot of you may be saying, well, I got to go find some new people. And that's fine. But now you know, you know, where your focus needs to be. And are, do you regularly rely on some key people in your life to help you accomplish your goals. You know, we're, we're really going to be talking next week about the law of empowerment and that only secure liver, leaders, excuse me, give power to others. Um, so we really um, want to next week talk about empowering other people and lifting the lids of the people in your inner circle. And uh, the third question is, do you believe that 50% or more of the credit for your accomplishments goes to the people on your team? And this is something that we all have to um, be really aware of, you know, is, is our egos, you know, and I, and I can tell you, I have no ego. I, you know, I'll be the first person to say that my team makes me look good. I am not as, this good. It's my team that makes me look good. Cheryl gets up on stage. She'll be the first one, right, Cheryl? Is yes. it you or is it your team that makes you look great? No, no, it's my team. It's a team. It's not even 50%. It's 90%. Yeah. You know, no, I do have the best team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had I've surrounded myself with. I knew this law, so I've looked at for the best people I could possibly find over the past twenty years and got them on my team. And I look right. amazing. People say, "Look at Paul's team. He's got this person, this person, this person, this person." Same thing with Cheryl. She's got a ton of of great people that she surrounded herself with that make Cheryl look incredible. You know, so when Cheryl goes up on stage and get the award, she acknowledges all the top leaders that made her who she is. Absolutely. You know, and that's that's what you want to. That's, again, your end game is, is to know that it's, this isn't about you. This is about t people around you. In Law 21, we're going to talk about the law of legacy. You know, the law of legacy is what I want to do is when I leave this, this earth, um, I want to be able to know that I raised four or five people up that actually passed me. They're like, Paul, thanks for the help. Thanks for getting me to this level. And they just, they just boom, passed me, you know. And, and that's, that's, that's what I want to have happen in my life. Um, so four books that will help you. Um, improve on this law is uh, the 17 uh, Indisputable Laws of Teamwork. That's an awesome book that we'll probably be going through here at Star School. Um, the 17 Essential Qualities of a Team Player. You know, we got to look for, for qualities in people. And that's the people you want to bring in your inner circle, the people who have these qualities. And another book that John wrote, it called Teamwork Makes the Dream Work. Uh, it's an awesome, awesome book. And that's so true. I mean, there's no, I mean, it's a nice cliche that we all use. But it's a thousand percent true that um, you cannot do this by yourself. You have got to surround yourself with great people. That's the only way you're going to reach ultimate success here at Longevity.
So first, spend your time mastering these 21 laws of leadership that we're going through on a weekly basis. If you missed any of these recordings, because we're on number 11, they're all at starschoolsystem.com. On the bottom left-hand side, it says continuing education. And there's a little link there that says the 21 laws of leadership. Just click on that and all the laws will be there. All the recordings that we've done are there for you to watch and for your team to watch. You know, and then you really want to plug your inner circle, your whole team into this star school and these leadership development classes and get together with them in a small group. Talk about it. You know, just don't play this video for me and Cheryl and that's the, the end. You know, now have a discussion with your team. Get, get together in a small group in a Zoom room or someplace and um, talk it over. You know, talk about this law and how we can all work together to, to build a better inner circle. Um, so read chapter 11 if you haven't done so already. Read chapter 12 for next week, the law of empowerment. And I'm going to turn the call over to Cheryl to close things up. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so, Paul. Thank you so much, Paul. That was absolutely awesome. You know, and as I was listening to the things that you were saying, it really hurt me that you guys, let me tell you the greatest gift that we have is we get to choose who we work with. We get to choose who we do life with. This is incredible. There's no other business out there where you get to choose. So I love that, Paul. And you guys, it is absolutely the most important thing that you can do is choosing the right people to do this business with you, right? So if you want to increase your capacity and maximize your potential as a leader, your first step is always to become the best leader that you can be, right? So you have to become the person that can go out there and give to other people to make them great. That's really what it's all about. The next is to surround yourself with the best leaders that you can find. Right? You have to do that. Never forget that a leader's potential is determined by those closest to him. Think about that. Paul said to rate the people that are around you. Right? You have to know that. And listen, if it's time to look in other places for people who are wonderful and great and who can really help you in your life, then, then you've got to do that, right? So that's the law of the inner circle. The only way that you can reach the highest level possible is to surround yourself with the very best 12 people. You guys, that is our call for today. Paul and I love you. We're here to support you. We are here to um, encourage you and to love you all along the way to your success. So you guys, um, have a great night, have a great week, and we will be here, Paul, next week, right? Yep. Okay. All right, you guys. Awesome. Bye -bye. Have a great week, everyone. Talk to you soon.